Hey guys, welcome back. In this video, we're going to be talking about computational design thinking as a general subject. And this is part of a bigger webinar that I gave a couple of weeks ago, but I just wanted to give you a bit of context before we cut to that. And this is coming up a lot recently with different discussions with clients and different prospective students. And I hear the same thing over and over again. It's that when you're a learning grasshopper, you've been following a lot of tutorials, but still you find that something's missing. You're finding it difficult to apply what, you're, what you know about Grasshopper to your own design scenarios or your own design solutions. And you feel like there's something missing in order for you to level up your skills. And what's missing is this idea of computational design thinking, changing how you approach problem solving. And the first realization that you need to have is that design problems are just inherently messy. Pro a grasshopper or a complete beginner, you know, the pathway through to a design solution is always fraught. You know, anybody who tells you any different is either a robot or a alien reptile. The complex problems um, have many different starting points and many different solutions. Your logical approach is going to be very different to mine, which is why following someone else's logic through YouTube tutorials can be very frustrating because you don't really understand why you're doing it and you're not developing these methodologies and workflows yourself. And so what we need to realize is that all of these paths through to the design solution are all exactly the same in one way or another. Some are more efficient than others, some are more elegant, yes, but this is just different levels of experience. Just because your script isn't perfect doesn't mean you need to be discouraged. The minefield of what people really struggle with is navigating this middle part, the central section. It's super easy to get lost and turn around, so our design goal is, runs away from us. But what I truly believe is that anybody with the right methods and the right approach can learn this to a very high standard. So this is what the rest of the video is about, talking about various approaches to start thinking differently and thinking more computationally with more of a computational mindset and developing these workflows to be able to break up design problems into much smaller steps so then you can piece back together this problem in using Grasshopper. What we, what we have to understand is that or any of these paths, none of them are wrong, none of them are incorrect. Some of them are efficient for sure. Some of them might have a better structure and approach it in you know, a, a cool, interesting way that you might be uh, impressed by, but none of them are wrong. You know, they all get to the design goal, the end in um, a way, in, in a certain way. And the common denominator from them all is they all have a direction. They're all moving in, in one sense, in one way or another towards the design goal. The yellow is probably what you would script after a couple of glasses of wine, maybe, uh, because you are going back on yourself a little bit, but you know, but in general, this idea of directioning. And so what we can start doing and, and start thinking about is, okay, well, what, how do we break this? How do we break this down? You know, if we can start understanding this, these, um, these paths as uh, processes, we can start understanding these in, in terms of stages. And if we can break these down into stages, understand them, we can then piece together the whole and to get to our design goal. This is not, no, this is not radical in any way. This is just design thinking and, and working through systems like this. But the key thing that we need to understand as well is that this is a, a very romanticized diagram. In reality, what we have is this. All we have is our design goal. We don't, we don't have steps. We don't know where to start. We don't know, we don't have a beginning. We only have an end. And so the only logical way of thinking about this, and the only logical thing that we can do is start from the only point that we that is known. And that is this concept again, start from the end. Just like we did in the beginning, understanding you know, where we want to be as a parametric designer, understanding where we want to be with any script is 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 the you know, the uh, the logical way of approaching this. We start with our design goal. And we from there we reverse engineer the problem, um, and and so the the biggest takeaway from this is intent. We have to have intent as parametric designers. It's super difficult to just start scripting and not even know what you're scripting. It actually is, makes no sense in in, this, in a way. Um, so this methodology is what I put together to really help you start to do this yourself, um, and we. This this concept of starting at the end is 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 where we're going to begin. You know, we're going to gather reference images. We're going to sketch out ideas of what we want. 
And then we're going to go through a process of analysis. And we're going to sketch analysis uh, or sketch analyze our, in our reference images. And we're going to be looking for features. And these features are we're going to do in three different colors. I'm going to take you through a process of this, um, an example. But we're looking for features. We're looking for parameters. And we're looking for components. And these are, these are sequential in this order because as you get better as a parametric designer, thinking what components you're going to use probably comes last, you know, when you, you develop this as you go. Um, what parameters uh, are going to be adjustable? This also comes a bit later, but the features, we can start understanding this straight away. Um, and the all of these sketches, we are going to put together into a storyboard. And we're going to order our sketches into an approximate story. And this is going to be our guiding map. And 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 it's going to you know help us script. So we're going to go through this project very very quickly as a um, um, as a, as a kind of test subject. Uh, and this is, I don't know if everyone knows this project, but this is Big's twenty sixteen Serpentine Pavilion. Um, it was called the Unzipped Wall, and it's uh, yeah this be beautiful structure made up of all just these interlocking. Um, actually, I don't know what the material is, some sort of composite panel, um, all interlocking together to create this crazy, uh, well, crazy looking structure, but there's actually quite a, 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 a robust logic to it. Um, and so the first thing that I would do is, okay, the first thing we're going to do is do our an analysis sketches. So I'm going to grab reference images and I'm going to sketch over the top, you know, and from this image, you know, what can we see? You know, I and, and immediately I see a central axis and I see some curves, uh, you know, the, the boxes are kind of, are, um, um, are, are the main visual thing, but what's actually setting them out is a very curved and fluid surface. And so where in this image, I see an axis, I see some left and right curves. These are my plan curves and I see some offsets. So already I can, uh, I've got my black, which is my features. Um, I've got my red, which are some parameters. So, you know, if I'm gonna make that right curve, for instance, I'm gonna need some offsets. Um, and the blue are, okay, maybe I could make my axis with a polyline or a bezier curve and, and bezier curves for the edges. Super simple, we're not scripting anything. We're not doing anything at the moment. We're just sketching down ideas. So let's go again, we'll put more images up and go, okay, well, how about, uh, you know, in this image, okay, well, my axis actually is defined by, is defining this length. I've got these sections, which I could also use Bezier profiles for, um, you know, maybe I can, I'm actually seeing this now as a surface. Now I draw over it, I'm seeing this as a surface. You know, don't imagine the boxes, uh, you know, what's setting out the boxes is this complex surface. Um, and, you know, the central axis, is if I, well, actually I'll go down to this bottom left. Um, if I'm looking at elevation on this, what I notice from the images is that it's a perfect grid in elevation. These boxes are not twisted there. It's, it's a perfect extrusion from the elevation. And you can see this in these images. Um, and so, okay, well then this grid has a U and a V division. You know, how many do I want to, to make the size of it? Um, the, uh, what I do notice as well, I actually noticed it in a, a previous image, this one, is that each side has a, um, basically a checkerboard, but each side is an opposite checkerboard. And, you, and this is how they interlock at the top. So one side will be the white of the chessboard. The other side will be the black of the chessboard. Um, so I see this, uh, you know, this patterning as well from left side and the right side. And then the, another interesting one is, okay, well, there's a very different depth and a clear depth to the boxes. And so, okay, well, can I define some sort of rule? Like It looks like the, the further the boxes are away from that central axis, then the deeper they get. And again, not scripted anything, just looking at features, um, parameters, and some, um, uh, and, and some components that I might use. Um, and working with, and this is, I really like working with form-driven architects like Big are, are working from their projects because they, you know, Big do these beautiful diagrams for all of their projects. And, you know, the, the way this is actually explained in the sequence of images really, really helps us out. So again, I'm just going to throw my, um, I did these sketches over the top. Again, I have my surface, my base curves and my section curves. I have my central axis with my grid. Okay, I'm extruding some cells. Um, you know, I, I want the rectangle. 
Um, and already I'm, you know, and, and I have my checkerboard pattern again. So I'm just sketching things out. You know, this is just, uh, you know, work, working things out. And the next level of this is to start storyboarding this. So what we're going to do is we're going to take all of our sketches and we're going to order them in our, one of our base principles. If you remember, we're going to order them from the most simple object to the most complex. So solid objects are at the end. So actually my, the cells, the boxes themselves that I see in the image, this is last. This is, this is way over at the end. These are really complex. So this is all far at this end. Um, you know, the way that I'm creating them will probably be next, you know, what the setting out of them. But in order to create that, I'm going to need uh, my grids. I'm also going to need my surface. My surface is going to be defined by some curves. My curves are going to be defined by my axis, my axis from some numbers. So we're decreasing, you know, we're, we're increasing from um, simple to complex, left to right, decreasing from right to left. And I hope you see that from, you know, the script that we looked through before, numbers create points, points create surfaces, surfaces create our more complex elements. And so let's, let's do, let's go a little bit more serious with this mapping. Um, the, all those red parameters that I listed out, I'm going to put on the left-hand side. These are my global parameters. These are going to control a whole load of things. So this is why, this is why they're super important. Uh, and they'll go, there are first thing, there are numbers that can control everything. Um, my next thing I'm thinking, and I'm putting my my blue below, which is just you know ideas about what components. This is my axis. Uh, my axis is my main piece of geometry setting this out. It has a length, a height, a width, um, and on these global parameters that's setting that out. I'm going to now split because I have two different things going on. I'm going to create my plan curves, um, and I'm going to create my elevation grid. Um, these these seem like a quite a logical thing to do. Um, my plan curves are going to um, inform my sections, um, so everything is referenced. Um, and my grid is going to I'm going to create my grid pattern as well. My sections and all my plans I'm going to create my surfaces with, um, and then all of this has come together in how I define these cells, and then I make my block geometry at the end. So from a simple set of sketches and some base principles of how we uh, script things. What we have given rise to is a map <laughs> and, and it has a direction to it. Um, and, you know, it's not perfect. It's, this is, we're not scripting anything yet. We're just mapping out um, a direction to our scripting so we don't get lost. So we miss out that green path in the middle of our other, um, um, in the middle of our other diagram. So I hope you found this helpful. What I would suggest is actually taking this workflow and methodology and trying it out yourself before you watch other people's tutorials. Look at the overall aim of what the tutorial is aiming for and go through this process yourself of sketching out the ideas and the core pieces of geometry and piecing this back together as a template, as a mapping exercise of how you might go about scripting it. You can then compare this against the tutorial and it'll give you a lot more context when you actually follow through with the tutorial. Please head over to the full webinar if you're really interested in learning more. Don't forget to drop us a follow and leave any comments or questions you have below. And if you're interested to develop your computational mindset even further, then reach out and I, we can discuss some of the coaching programs that we offer at TechnoLearn. Thanks for watching guys and I'll see you on the next videos.